Dr. Thomas Manto is respected worldwide as one of God's most dynamic prophetic voices to the nation and to the 21st century church. People across four continents are now experiencing God's word. Four continents, okay? So he has been able to traverse four continents. He has gone to 32 countries. And the Bible say, uh, uh, no, the, 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 the profile, not the Bible. You know I like the Bible. Presence by God's word, presence and power through his miracle crusades and television ministry. His cut aging messages from the throne of God have released supernatural visitation into many cities. God has used him to speak prophetically into the destiny of thousands of individuals and also concerning sterling world events that have recently come to pass, including his 1997 prophecy regarding the NYC 9 stroke 11 or uh, I think it's the year tragedy yeah through his ministry he has watched the Holy Spirit open blind eyes and deaf ears have creep, uh, uh, have cripples work and performed many other creative miracles scores of individuals business people and church leaders have also experienced miracles of financial increase and breakthrough after being touched by the anointing. The glory of God will cover the earth. Jesus is Lord. Praise the name of the living God. He comes from Dominion International. This is uh, a man of God that God helped me. We encounter him uh, 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 in uh, these big meetings and uh, through a, a convention that took place in KCC. And the Lord has been so faithful. Ni vizuri ya kwamba mjue ya kwamba tulikutana na yeye kabla ika uh, tujaanza physical church. Na wakati tulikutana na yeye is one of the people that really ushered the grace to open this church. Is one of the voices that spoke. Amen. Before you were here. Before this church came to be. Is, uh, he has preached many times and he has talked with uh, Archbishop Harrison Nanga. He has preached in his church. He has prophesied. Many things. And they have come to pass. The other day he was in uh, Bishop Wanderi's church. CFF. And he prophesied about the increase and the expansion. Of the church. And uh, it took place. It, de it didn't stay for so long. There was a lot of increase. The other day I was watching him. Prophesying one year ago. To Apostle Suna. Martin Suna and God has elevated him. A bishop, God has elevated him even through the conversion that took place the other day, the crusade. So he has gone to 32 nations. He's born in US, uh, New York. So you have an international grace. Kuna international grace mukonayo. So ukitaka kuenda inje India wakati wakutap. Praise the Holy God. Ukitaka kuenda kwa ma nations inje wakati wakutap. I'm a better grace you could prophesy increase upon the life of people. So I know even your life today will never be the same again. There shall be increase in your life. There shall be increase. I know that this church will never be the same again. Uh, I want you to celebrate uh, the prophet Dr. Uh, Thomas Manto as he's coming to minister to us in Jesus' mighty name. Let's celebrate as he comes in Jesus' mighty name. Celebrate until he comes. Great. Until he comes, prophet, God bless you. Welcome, minister, to the people of the Lord. As the Lord uh, use you and help you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Cute baby there. Hi, baby. She's looking around like, who, me? Yeah, you. Hi. This one. Ah, thank you. 
All right, have your seats. I have a great book here that I wrote on the topic of success. And Archbishop published this for me as a seed, and he wrote the foreword, three pages about me. So if you'd like to know more about me, you can uh, read what he said. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he, he said very amazing things. Archbishop Harrison Nanga wrote the foreword for this book, and he published it for me as a seed. Uh, we love it and respect each other very much. He now has been elevated since I was there and prophesied over the church. He's been elevated greatly, and anybody that's smart can put two and two together and figure out that I had my hand in that. God's hand on me, through my hands, through my voice, uh, did a lot. And uh, now he has the biggest church in Kenya. Someone lift your hands. He has the biggest church. He has the biggest church. And uh, they were running about seven or 8,000 on Sunday. Now they're busting out at about... Uh, about 12,000 people coming there. You know, how did it happen? It was supernatural. When I was there, what did I prophesy about elevation and expansion? This is what we carry everywhere we go. If people connect correctly with me, grace follows for elevation and expansion. So this book is almost sold out. Uh, we're going to have to go to another printing. <laughs> anyway, I have it here today. I'll sign a copy for any partners that want to sow a seed into our anointing. That's how you get this book. It's the best way. I don't sell things. I don't like to say it's this price or this. I don't like to do that. I, I like to say if you sow a generous seed, I'll sign a copy for you. And if you like the book, you can get it. Can you say Amen. All right, now you better get the book because the angels will ask you later, did you get the prophet's book? And you don't want to be embarrassed, okay? So you need to have this book. The best book ever written is right here. Hello? Hello. All right. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 2 for a few minutes, for a minute. It says, the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, the son of Amos, concerning a certain people in a certain place. I like to say it's for me, because uh, whenever I see a promise in the Bible, I claim it for myself. Uh, it's not that I don't like Judah and Jerusalem, but I'm not there, so I really don't care what happened to them. One thing about life, if you want to succeed, you start to have to care about what it is you're going to accomplish. If you don't care about yourself, no one else will. Even God will look at you and go, hmm, you don't think much about what I've called you to do if you don't want to work on it. Yeah? So, uh, in Isaiah chapter 2, the heading says, the future house of God. It talks about the mountain of the Lord will be established. It'll be exalted. Nations will flow into it. Can you believe it? Many people will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God, uh, the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. That's the purpose of the church, so that we can walk in his paths. For out of Zion will go forth the law. Now, first, you had to have a place that was exalted, you have to have a place where people went up there. Then you have to have a place where God teaches us his ways. And then you have to walk in his paths. And then, after that, <laughs> out of Zion will go forth the law. People want the law first, but it doesn't happen first. You have to establish something first. Can you say Amen. If you didn't establish anything, how do you expect to have anything? Everything has to be built. Say a big amen. That was powerful what I just said. Amen. If you don't build it, who's going to come? It's a very powerful chapter here, Isaiah 2. I really like it. There's a lot of things here. He says now he'll begin to judge 
between the nations and rebuke many people. Do you know God can rebuke many people? Do you know God is the God of the rebuke? <laughs> He's not happy with everything the way it is. And if you <laughs> settle for less, <laughs> it's not his fault. I want to cry. I want to cry when I think about it. It's very unpleasant to think about it. Because if you settle for less than what he's ordained, it's your fault. If I settle for less than what he's ordained, it's my fault. I had an opportunity to go somewhere yesterday, and I didn't see my place in it. So I didn't go. <laughs> and one of my dear people helped me. I want to give a testimony. One of my dear people helped me by writing me a message about the scenario, the flow of the day. And I really got a revelation. I thought, you know what? That's brilliant. You know what? Yeah. And I won't tell the details, but and one thing led to another. And I had a few meetings of things that I needed to do that were very good for me. Very good for the work of God. Very good for what I needed, okay? The whole day. So there was no time, really, to squeeze in to go to try to appear somewhere where there's no purpose. Write this down. Write this down. Write this down. Someone make a note of this in your phone or wherever. <clears throat> I should not appear anywhere where there's no purpose for me there. Did you get it? I see a dearie writing. Oh, you're writing it down over there. Very good. Very good. Four notebooks and biros. You got it. And you'll buy it. Mama, you got your Bible there, I see. Very, very good. I should, and another, another lady back there. Who else is over here? You're writing it down, Pastor Apostle. Beautiful. My other friend, your other pastor here. Very good. Write this down. I should not appear anywhere where there's no function for me there. There's no meaningful thing for me to do. Just don't, and, and next point, don't take time in your daily life to waste time. Always be working on something that's beneficial because we have a calling, we have a mission. We have, we have a time frame to get things done. Again, if you don't work on it, God won't do it for you. One thing about God, now my hair is very amazing and it's very difficult to manage sometimes, you know, but I have to play with it. I have to play with it to get it so it stays there. Hello? It takes a lot, you know, and today I'm running out of hairspray. I mixed it with water and it makes it weaker. So it's a little bit, usually I just go and it just freezes. It stays there. But today I, I got to do a little extra work. So now... If the wind was blowing in here, I'd be, I'd be ruined. I'd be in trouble. Praise the Lord. Amen. But it's okay. There's no wind here, so if you just say. But I have to work with that. Is God going to do that for me? Forget the really. There's no really. The answer is no. Just no. No really. Yeah. No African expressions needed. Not really. Someone said not really. That means maybe. It's, there's no maybe. It's no. It, it, will he lead me to do it the way I need to do it? Yes. That's it. Hello? So, number one, you have to discover what it is God wants you to be doing. Then there's a there's a format, there's a structure for the house of God. I love it. You could make this into like 10 points in, in the first, uh, how many verses? Just the first four verses of Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2, 1 to 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can get about 7 or 8 or 9 or 10, 10 things. How it's going to happen. He said this will come to pass in the latter days. We're definitely in the latter days. First of all, Isaiah was about 3,000 years ago. <laughs> so uh, almost 3,000 years ago. So we're way past him. We're way past Jesus 2,000 years ago. Hello? And perhaps we've entered the last days for real. So this is definitely the latter days. So that qualifies as a time frame. 
The mountain of the Lord's house will be established on the top of the mountains. Now, what this means is symbolic also of a place, situations, you know, ways you're going you're gonna to do things to get things done, but you have to figure that out. What it is in your life, your career, your calling, your mission, whatever it is, you have to figure it out. I'm preaching good here. Someone say praise the Lord. Someone say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say it in whatever language you want to say. Praise the Lord. It's okay for me. Just say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for what? There's a reason to praise the Lord. Not just to say praise the Lord. To praise him for revelation. For an answer. For something we need to know. Hello? Hello? You're supposed to say hi. Why are you people looking at me like that? I told you in the beginning, this is your space, it's your place, it's your fault. Somebody did it, it's your people. I'm not from here. I, I'm here right now for a few minutes and then I'm leaving again. So don't look at me like that. Be comfortable in your own space. And if you don't like it, figure out what to do next. Here's a principle. The only thing you need to know all the time is what to do next. Write this down. The only thing I need to do, know all the time, every second, is what to do next. I need to know what to do next. In the moment, in the hour, in the day, in the week, in the month, in the year, in the scenario, in the environment, in the place. What do I do now? And it's okay to ask God for help. He will help. He will answer. You could go to God and say, hey, boss, help me please. What do I do now? What's Basically, ask him, what's the best use of my time? What's the best thing I could be doing with myself? What is the best use of my time in your eyes? And then listen and let them answer you. Now, if there were instructions given before, you should be reminded of the instructions you were given before that you didn't do yet. First, do those things. Here's another point. I'm, I'm teaching really good here. This is really great. If you get this, oh my. I can make a little book out of this, and I probably will. If you follow the instructions that you were given, you're a brilliant son, you're a brilliant daughter of God and of the one you're working for, both. So don't look for a new instruction if you haven't fulfilled the last one. Try to do what you were supposed to do already or ask God for a recollection of all of the things he wants you to be doing and have, have already done, and get to, to things to get done, actually done. And there's a list of things that you were told before. You said, this is needed, this is needed, this needs to be fixed, this needs to be looked after, this needs to be planned for. Can I tell you, life, a successful life, is as much in planning as it is in performance. It's powerful. Oh my God, I'm flowing here. Write this down. Success is as much in planning as it is in performance. Did you get that? See, people look, look to perform. You want to perform. Oh, uh, yeah. She wants to climb up. A little baby wants to get on the, on the microphone, try, the, the camera tripod. She wants to climb up. See, she's obeying the scripture here. That's the Holy Ghost. Let's go up to the mountain of the Lord. She's down the floor. She's a little baby this high. She looks up and she sees something. She wants to climb. You see, in her mind, that's where, that's good. It's, that's good. Always look to go higher than where you are. I shock people when I take pictures of the clouds in the sky. I look up if there's mountains. I look out if there's water. I look up to see the beauty in the heavens all the time. Some people, 
They're just looking around, around where they are right here. And they get nowhere. They don't change anything. The Bible says in Psalm 121, write this down, Psalm 121. Look up to where your help comes from. Your help comes from the Lord. Look up. Look up to the hills. Look up to the mountain. That's what he said here. The house of God is in a, in a high place. It's up. It's not just here. Always be looking up to higher ways of doing things. And never listen to people that tell you you can't do anything. If someone says you can't do something, that's a good reason to do it. I, I, I heard a great interview. I just clicked it on the YouTube uh, yesterday afternoon. And I saw this great rock singer, very famous guy. The lead singer of the group The Who. His name is Roger Daltrey. He's from England. He told a story about a, uh, when he got kicked out of school. He was 14 years old. And on the, about his fifth, the day of his 15th birthday, the teacher called him in and suspended him from the school and kicked him out and told him as he was walking out the door, the man was holding the door. He said his name. Some British schoolmaster. And he said, you'll never amount to anything with your life. And he said his last name, Daltrey, as he's walking out. He said, now I look back and I want to thank, I thanked his family. Remember, the man's dead probably a long time. He went to thank the family of the guy who told him he couldn't achieve anything. He said, that was the biggest kick in the pants that I needed to make me move. And he said he decided, even when he was 14 years old, he was already a singer. He said, when I go to sing with the band, it's fun. When I go to school, it feels like punishment. Hello? He said, what am I sitting here listening to these ugly people telling me this and that and learning about this and I'm never going to use it? I agree with that. So he went right out into his music career and the rest is history. He became one of the famous rock singers in the world, multi-millionaire. He never could have made that money on a job or in school or anywhere. You get it? Now, we say people should go to school. It's a lot of things you need to learn. You need to learn English and mathematics and maybe a little bit about science. I don't know. But a lot of the stuff you learn there, you won't use it in your life. So even from a young age, find out what it is God wants you to do. Someone lift your hands up. Say, Lord, help me, please. Help me. Show me what I need to know, what to do next. Show me who I need to be with. Show me who I need to be without. If somebody constantly irritates you, write this down. If someone irritates me, I need to remove my company from them. Hi, baby. Can you get this baby on the camera? Get a shot of this baby. What are you doing? People are going to think I'm crazy. I'm talking to invisible people. Yeah. Look at that baby. Everybody you see now? Turn around, mommy. Ah, she's coming up. Come on. Come, come. Look at her. She's smiling. Oh, yeah. Children, you know? You see, she's looking for something, yeah? She's looking to move. She doesn't want to stay where she is, sitting in one place. Find out what it is God has ordained for you. Write this down. I must know from today exactly what God wants for my life. Oh, yes. Exactly what God wants for me. I have to know it. You getting that? Some of you have a phone, you don't have a paper. Type it in your phone. Get busy. Send yourself a WhatsApp. Send yourself a WhatsApp. Open up your WhatsApp and type in there. Even there's voice to text. You can talk to it. You hit the button, the little icon, and talk to it. It types what you say. I use it every hour of every day. 
I record everything that I say. Everything that I say, I record. We're recording this on three cameras and another audio device. Even in the office with the pastor, I recorded it. I recorded on audio and video what we talked about. Because why? We want to document what's said. If you can't replay it for somebody, how are they going to know? How are they possibly going to know whatever happened? Things go in the air, you hear something, you don't make a note of it, you, you, you just forget about it. And you go to the next hour, the next day, like nothing was ever said. That's wrong, very bad. You need, we need to be students of principles. Now, the Bible says in Isaiah 2, the house of the Lord, the house of God will in that place, he will teach us his ways and then we'll walk in his paths. For him to teach us his ways means what? What does it mean? It means I want to learn what he wants me to do. It's not so mysterious all the time. Sometimes it's very practical. It could be spiritual. Hello? Hello? Uga. Oh, someone went, oh, yeah, you'll get to delayed reaction. See, people are, see, there's too much dust in the air. Got it in your ears. It's got it in here. You need to, if you can't physically get it out, pray. God, please clean my head. Then all the noise all around you. I hate noise. Anytime I hear noise, I want it to stop. I command it to stop. I don't take noise in my environment. I don't want to hear nobody's radio. I don't want to hear anybody's like. I had one woman, a woman of God, a pastor's wife in uh, Mombasa. Many years ago, I went to preach. The, and uh, another pastor told me about the church. He said, yeah, the guy is like this and the wife is like that. I said, I know. She got in the car down there in the south coast and driving all the way to the ferry to go to Mombasa airport. That woman did not shut up for one second. She yapped and yapped and yapped. And I'm the guest preacher from America, the renowned prophet to the nations of the world. And she's even speaking in her own language. She's going, ah, bah, bah, bah. I don't know what she's saying. It was very annoying. I never forgot it. And by the way, that was many, many years ago. If I told you when it was, that was like, how many years ago? Four plus three. That was like 17 years ago. 17, one seven years ago. One decade and a half more than that. And I never forgot it till today. I never saw her again, but I have the memory. Blah, 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 blah. Really loud. I was like, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Protocol. Then I, 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 I was in Maasai land. Now I can understand because the people live out in the field. They live outside a lot. So this woman got in the car halfway. The pastor picked her up on the way to Kajai. Way inside Maasai land, I was preaching somewhere. And the video's on my YouTube channel. She was talking so loud, I thought, her I can, I can understand. So you have to control the sounds. I'm not complaining, but... You can control the sounds in your environment to make it so you can think. Lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, help this mind of mine. To have peace and have quiet and have clarity of thought. God said he'll teach us his ways. Now, how can we, how can we know his ways? And then <coughs> how, can we, how can we know his ways? And then how can we walk in his paths? if we don't have a place to listen to him correctly. That's why I said, I love this, I'm getting revelation here. That's why it says go up to the mountains. In the, up in the mountains it's quiet. Hello, down in the valley it's noisy. Hello, lift your hand and say, Lord, take me to a high place. I don't know if it's, a, there's no mountains right here. You don't need a physical mountain, but you need to go to a place that's above all the noise. Write this down, I'm going to live above the noise. Write that down. I have to live above the noise. Amen. 
That means wherever you are, control the environment. So you can think clearly. Now God went, to, went on to say later, he said out of Zion, in the uh, uh, second part of the third verse, third part of the third verse, 3b, which would be Isaiah 2, 3c, uh, the c part of the verse, the very last uh, sentence. It says, and the, the, the law will come out from her, and the word of the Lord will come out. Then he said he'll judge among the nation, between the nations, and he will rebuke many people. What does that mean? It means a lot of things are being done that's not correct. You have to look at your, at your environment and say, what's not right here? Write this down. I'm going to look at my environment and say, what is not working well for me here? What's something that needs to be done better? Ask God to help you know that. And then whatever he says, take action. He said, he said then, he'll have to become warriors. He'll rebuke many people and they'll put their, beat their swords into plowshares. Which meant they can do things with the land. All this is action. And this is just the first four verses. Never mind the rest of the chapter. Isaiah 2, 1 to 4. Never forget it. I don't, I don't even want to go further. Because it's too much. Well, in the seventh verse, he said, The land is also f full of silver and gold. And there's no end to the treasures. And their land is also full of horses. And there's no end to their chariots. But the land is also full of idols. <laughs> there's the job there to cut down the idols. The land is full of gold and silver. Hello. And he said... There's no end to their treasures. And this is all by the Holy Ghost, by the way. I didn't have any notes here. I didn't plan this. It's just coming by the Spirit. Say praise the Lord. Amen. You never met anybody like me. You have a guy, he has his whole sermon. Or else they're going to do on Resurrection Sunday. By the way, it's Resurrection Sunday. Oh, Lord, we love you. He rose again. Lift your hands and worship him for one minute. Resurrection, and I'm talking about how to build the house of God, how to build your life. Do you see where Jesus is right now? He's not on the cross anymore. Even when he came out of the tomb, he's still not, he's not there either. He left and went upstairs. Hello? Up to the mountains, above the mountains in the third heaven at the right hand of God. That's where he is. Does Jesus sit around waiting all the time? No, he moved Write this down. Write this down. John 21, 25. John 21, 25. Write it down. John 21, verse 25. It said, If I were to write, John said, what all that Jesus did, I suppose the whole world could not contain the volumes of the books to be written of everything he did every day. He was a mover, he was an action man. If that's how he was in his earthly ministry, how is he now? Did he change? No, Hebrews 13, 8, write this down. Hebrews 13, 8. This message is really gonna help a lot of people. I pray the video comes out well, we'll send it all over the world. Hebrews 13, 8 said Jesus Christ is the same Yesterday, today, and forever. He's not changing. He's the king of kings then. He's still the king of kings now. Hello? He was the everlasting father, the mighty God, the prince of peace then. That's what he is today. What is he concerned about? Us having a religious church to talk about what was 
or should we be or should we be prophetically talking about what's coming? I'm glad I'm on the right side of the equation. I'm talking about what's coming. Someone lift your hands and say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Their land is full of silver and gold. And there's no end to their treasures. So I say that to myself. My land are full of silver and gold and there's no end to my treasures. Write this down, Isaiah 45, verses 2 and 3. It talks about treasures that God would give us from everywhere. He said, by this you'll know that I'm the Lord your God who even calls you by your own name. How will we know that? By the treasures he gave us. And the land is also full of horses and there's no end to their chariots. Which means there's no end to our transportation needs being fulfilled. Lift your hands. You need to get your own car. Get your own car. Get your own vehicle. I don't care how you do it. I don't care how you do it. Command it to happen. Someone said, I don't have, you don't have the money. So who asked you about that? Where there's a will, there's a way. You desire to have one, it'll happen. I had many churches we were supposed to go in there because of the, the you know, the, the week, this week that it is, you know, the resurrect, or Easter week, they call it. So much going on. And then this pastor here called me last night. Before last night, 8 or 9, 8, 8 or 9 p.m., I didn't know I was coming here. So I just decided, good, I'm coming. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm coming and I'm going. In a few moments, I'll be going, okay? So... <clears throat> the Lord wants us to understand there's no limit to what we need. So stop making excuses in your head. Write this down. Worry is the wrong kind of worship. It's worship to unbelief or even the devil. Faith is worship to God because you say, I believe you. We say we believe him. There's a psalm, Psalm verse 7. I think the first and second verse says, we trust in the Lord. And you go, yeah. But guess what? We really have to do that. <laughs> My job is to be the messenger. But I, I say this. Anybody that wants to hurt me, they're going to be hurt themselves. The scripture is full of places that talk about that. Proverbs 17.13 says, if you do evil to a good person, evil will never leave you. Isaiah 41.11 said, if you strive with a person to hurt them, not only will you be ashamed and disgraced, not only will you become as nothing, but you can also die. He rebukes many people. I love this verse, Lord. I found another one in my arsenal of weapons of war. He rebukes many people. See, now he said all of these things are there. The mountain of the Lord, the house of the Lord, the place to learn my ways, then to walk in my paths, then the law will come out from you. All these powerful things in Isaiah 2, verses 1 to 4. But then later on, the 8th verse, he said, but after saying that the treasures are there, and there's no end to the treasures, and it's also a land full of horses and chariots. Come on. Full of vehicles. Now, the days we would say SUVs, cars, vans, trucks, whatever you need. Amen. Not bicycles and boaters. Real vehicles that you could sit in, close the windows, put the air conditioning on, put some worship music on, or put your favorite preacher on. Even have it hooked up to the internet. Hello? Hello? Bluetooth, internet. You can watch my, you can listen to my video while you're driving. Just keep your eye on the road. There's a way you can put the audio, uh, the video off on the screen and just play the audio. Even from the YouTube channels. You can listen to the word as you're driving. But first you need a car, but you need to look at it. Isaiah 2, 7. Said the land is full of full of cars, full of horses and chariots. This is so powerful. 
But then he said, but the land is filled with idols. This is a problem. So now, those things have to be dealt with. Hello? I'll do that in another session. Right now, I just want to talk about the blessing. So it goes on to say more and more how everything is so great. Verse 13, the cedars, the great trees, the high and lifted up, the oaks. Upon all the high mountains and the high hills, they're lifted up. Upon every high tower and every fortified wall, even the ships of Tarshish, which go out into the sea to bring back treasures. The loftiness of man, it talked about, is all there. But then he said, don't be exalted in yourself. I'll bring you down low. But, but look between the lines and see all the promises of treasures. The great prophet Isaiah said in the first chapter, verse 19, verse 17, learn to do well. And he said, come, let us reason together, verse 17. Verse 18, he said, learn to do well. And then he said, if you're willing and obedient to the vision of God, you'll eat the good of the land. Amen. Lift your hands and let's pray. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So I say this, so be it. Amen. That's how it's supposed to be. That's where we're going. Father, we receive Isaiah Chapter 2, and all the other scriptures you mentioned, Isaiah 45, also Isaiah 48, 17. So now I'm the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. Yes, Psalm 35, 27, he says he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. That's me. I hope it's you. Amen. Deuteronomy 8, 18. He said, I, the Lord thy God, who gives you power to get wealth. Oh, yes. I'm the Lord your God who gives you power to receive treasures, riches, wealth, all kinds of blessings. Amen. He said there in Isaiah chapter 2, I just found it by the Holy Ghost today. Right here, fresh. I, when I opened my Bible, it was there. I hadn't, even sitting here, I hadn't had it. I didn't get it till I came here. That's supernatural, yeah? The whole sermon came when I touched the pulpit. Not one second before. When I was there, I had nothing to say. But give me the microphone. It ends there. I have. I'll. I'll preach for. I could preach for a week and not stop by the Holy Ghost. Hundreds of scriptures in my memory and my spirit. I can share. Where are my notes? Have I been reading any notes? No. It's all by the Spirit. God has so much for us. There's no limit for his treasure. So, Father, on this resurrection day, we thank you, Lord, that you opened the way for us to be blessed, to be saved, to be healed, to be delivered, to be free, to be your children, to be your son, a lady, to be your daughter, that we can walk in life to fulfill your will, that we can know your ways and that we can walk in your paths and that we can let the law flow out from us and then many things can happen that are just beyond all that we can ask or think. You said in Ephesians 3.20, you'll do above and beyond what we can ask or think. Now, if you want a prophecy, I just gave you one. For the last however many minutes I've been speaking. This is one long prophecy. Take this and dive into it and get it, take it and build it because this is the word of the Lord to you. I don't think I'll have anything else to say. I think I'm, I'm just finished with this. And while some churches are just going over the, you know, the seven last words Jesus said on the cross, you know, that's nice to do once in your life and you learn those things. But how does it apply today? <clears throat> when he says, my father, why has you forsaken me? That happened then. He's not forsaken. Hello. The Bible talks about a city not forsaken. That's us. He's not there on the cross. Some great church. Big across the world, billions of people in it, in fact, they still have the cross, Jesus on the cross in the church. He's not there. He left. I was in Jerusalem in Israel. I was in the tomb of Golgotha, the tomb of Jesus Christ. I was there. I stood inside. I have photographs of me standing there. 
And I saw the place where they laid his body. I touched it with my hand. I stuck my hand through there. I have a little fence, a little gate. I put my hand on the gate and I tried to reach and touch. I touched the ground. I couldn't get all the way to the place where his body was, but I, could, I knelt down, I touched the ground, I put my hand on the ground. And I felt it was very cold there, like it didn't feel, it didn't feel alive. I was, I was really puzzled. I thought if Jesus was laying here, and this is where he got up and walked out of it when he was resurrected, this is a powerful place. Yeah. But guess what? An angel of the Lord came and tapped me on the back, on my shoulder back here, and, and pointed my attention to the door. And on the door is written, for he is not here. He is not here, for he is risen. Lift your hand. He is not here. And the angel went like, you get it? I was like, oh, thank you. Let's get, let's, let's leave. He's not here. I don't want to be here. So we went to the upper room and led a prayer service and the Holy Ghost came. But at the garden tomb, I didn't feel anything great, you know. But in the upper room where the spirit of the Lord was moving, that's what he's doing today. I felt really wonderful. So always be moving to the next thing. Hello? Hello. Wherever you came from, it's not where your destiny destination is. Get up from there. Get up from the people. Get out and move. Create something new. Let God use you. Hello? I'm prophesying. Amen. Let God use you to raise up something that no one else did before. Get busy about it from today. Everybody stand up. Let's receive our pastor. Let's receive our pastor. Lift your hands to the Lord right now. Father, I thank you for the grace, for the touch of heaven upon all your people. Let something new and divine happen from this afternoon to get us to walk to the next place in Jesus' name. The next level of grace, the higher place to build what you've ordained. Let us never stay stuck where we've been. Let us move into the destiny and the purpose that you've ordained in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Mantha IV. See you again. Love you. All right. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you for every word that I've spoken. Let it go into them and produce life. Whatever miracles needed, you can do that. But the real miracle is for us to succeed. The real miracle is for us to walk into destiny. Lift your hands. I prophesy over you that from today in a new way, you're going to walk into purpose and you're going to be mightily blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you want to do with this ministry. Let it happen. And I just gave you the how-to. Build according to the plan of God, and everything will work right in Jesus' name. God bless you. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering. You can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.